on this day, the 7th of December, 1949, the retreat of the forces of the Republic of China to Taiwan begins. This was a terrible defeat for the Chinese nationalists. Only a year before, many people were convinced that they would win the civil war. The communists were confined to northeastern China in the area around Beijing. Incidentally, the same amount of territory that Japan occupied for much of the Second World War. But through incompetence, through laziness, through backdealing, and through a lack of will, the Chinese nationalists were swept aside in 1949. Chiang Kai-shek, the leader of the nationalists for so many years, stood down. But he ended up being the one that organized the retreat to Taiwan. In many ways, he had still more power than the new president. And he was the one that started organizing the, the gold lift. Over a hundred tons of gold were transported to Taipei. Most of the Chinese Air Force was flown over to the island. The Chinese Navy was sent to the island. And up to two million uh, troops retreated to the island with their families and many more civilians and refugees came to Taiwan between 1949 and 1950. Although the civil war was lost, it was not yet over. The government abandoned Nanking, Nanjing, Chinese call it. They went first to Canton, or Guangzhou, and as the Red Army advanced, they withdrew again to their old hiding place during the Second World War of Chongqing in Sichuan, one of the largest cities in the world now. And there it was inevitable that defeat was coming. Sichuan, parts of Yunnan, western China, uh, the island of Hainan, and a few board, uh, areas bordering the sea, uh, parts of Zhejiang, uh, Fujian, were still in control um, by the nationalists. But they couldn't hold it for very long. Chiang Kai-shek decided the best thing to do would be to retreat and to re-establish authority, to reorganize, and then to come back. He would keep this up until 1965. And it was only then that he finally gave up and decided to spend his time making Taiwan a better place. But at this time, they were fleeing. The amount of treasure that the nationalists took with them to Taiwan is enormous. They took books and scrolls, they took ancient artifacts, they took old um, clothes, royal treasures, um, they took things out of museums, emptied them, and put the contents into boxes and crates and sent them to Taipei. In the long term, that has been a very good thing. The modern Chinese government talks about Taiwan as the treasure chest because there is so much ancient Chinese uh, treasure in the country. The Cultural Revolution destroyed huge amounts of Chinese artifacts Chinese buildings, temples, uh, books were, and scrolls were burned, 
um, so much was destroyed during the Cultural Revolution that they have very little left to show. Only the things that were very difficult to destroy, such as things that were carved into mountains, the caves that were carved out of uh, mountains, the, um, the largest of the temples that they couldn't really destroy, things like the, the Forbidden Palace, the big stuff and there's like the big um, the Buddha that's carved into uh, the cliff near the Yangtze River these sorts of things are very difficult to destroy but all the smaller stuff all the pottery all the clothes all the books and scrolls and libraries and wooden buildings are gone almost all of them and so they they look at Taiwan and they see it bursting with ancient Chinese treasures, and they call it the treasure chest. So in the long term, even in the medium term, it was a very good thing that nationalists took as much as they could. They also took people. They, they begged and pleaded with any intellectual that would listen and scholar to come to Taiwan, and many did, many tens of thousands came with their families, and they re-established the various institutes of learning that were on the mainland. Bit by bit, they had to fall back from Chongqing to Chengdu as the communists came in, and eventually they had to pull back even from there, and then on the 7th, they finally retreated to Taiwan. But that was not the end of the resistance in China. Throughout Sichuan, Yunnan, and Hainan, and even in the West, there was still resistance for many years. Throughout 49 and into the mid-50s, there were still nationalist guerrillas in the mountains and forests of Yunnan. Hainan, another island off the coast of China, was nationalist for over a year. Problem is, it's much nearer to the coast than Taiwan, and they had some people sympathetic to the communists in on the island. So eventually they took Hainan. But in Yunnan, the fighting did not end until the mid-50s. They withdrew bit by bit into Burma, and then were able to get flights and boats from Rangoon to Taiwan. Eventually, the dream of retaking the mainland faded away. And now, what they're left with is the island of Taiwan and a few islands off the coast of China. One island in the South China Sea and one little reef with an island and a, a station not far away from Hong Kong. That is all of the territory that the Republic of China controls today. If you like these videos, come back for more tomorrow. Subscribe, like, and comment.